playback. Remember, you just lost your engines. And action. Look to your right. Check that engine. Get on the phone. Talk to your captain. Keep talking. Let him know you'll be taking on a little bit of water. And uh, that's why we call it a physical effect. Everyone gives us a big round of applause. So, thank you, Reason. All right, everyone, roll playback. Remember, crew, you've just lost, or excuse me, remember, crew, you're on a surveillance mission. And action. Everyone, look up. Captain, find that plane here. Plane's approaching. Enemy fighter, 10 o'clock. because he's coming around for another run. Captain, get that PC boat out of there. It's too late. You just lost your engine. Captain, get off the phone. Talk to him again. Hey, Decker, Decker, stand up real quick. What's that off the starboard? Looks like an incoming torpedo. You think it's all over, and you start to relax. But just saying, you hear more planes approaching. You look up, point to the skies. Enemy bombers, it's 12 o'clock. All the way, everybody. Hit the deck. Yeah. And now, there are two more torpedoes coming in fast off the stern. They pass beneath your boat. Everyone on the boat, look out for the audience. Point. Yeah, look out. Everyone, let's our Leave our loading area, take a look high in the sky toward the front of the shuttle, and you'll see our award-winning Earful Tower coming into view as we complete the turns ahead on the left-hand side. Its design is based on a water tank Walt Disney had built at his Burbank studio back in 1939. Ours stands a lucky 13 stories tall, capped off with a big set of Mickey Mouse ears. Each one of those ears weighs about 5,000 pounds. Also on the left will pass a rehearsal space for our extreme stunt show called Lights, Motors, Action. I believe I heard them rehearsing on the set a moment ago, but when our drivers are not on the set, they are often in this area, honing their skills with a variety of practice vehicles. You'll see, for example, some red and yellow Pontiac GTOs parked over here chosen for their legendary performance. Yeah. As well as being a theme park, the Disney and Gym Studios is a working production center, and uh, we feature sound stages, outdoor sets, we have state-of-the-art yeah. editing facilities, recording studios, and just about everything else we need to produce TV shows, motion pictures, and even radio broadcasts. And we've had quite a number of high-profile projects take place here throughout the years, including films like Instinct, starring Anthony Hopkins and Cuba Gooding Jr., Fire Return with Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Diane Keaton, Honey and Blue of the Kids, starring Mark Brennis, Astro 57, Wesley Snipes, many others. TV projects like From the Earth to the Moon, which was a 13-part HBO miniseries produced here by Tom Hanks, Work on the Golden Girls, an episode of the hit drama ER, game shows like Wheel of Fortune, and of course, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, with all three just Melvin and Meredith Vieira. In fact, Meredith was here a few weeks ago taping a number of episodes that will be airing this season on the syndicated version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We had live with Regis and Kelly here, and while the list really goes on and on. On the right side, we're going to be circling around these two full-scale replicas of P-40 aircraft that were built in Touchstone's blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor, starring Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett. These were taken from the mold of a real P-40 Warhawk. They're produced in fiberglass over a steel frame. The propellers are made of wood, though. They were spun by hydraulic motors inside as most of them were shot apart and blown off during the film's dramatic attack sequence. Sixteen of these were built on a soundstage to use the movie. We just have these two remaining now. If you remember more than sixteen, lining the runways and sitting by the hangars, you remember correctly, but they were all created inside a computer. So if you're on the right side, if you take a look up now, you have a really good view on your side of the Europe Tower over there. And next we'll take a look at, I think, our most glamorous area, our award-winning creative costuming department, where it all starts with a designer staff. Where they make costumes. Inside against the walls, you'll see many examples of our designer's work. From there, see? our talented seats just as the tailors take over. On the left side of the display cases, you'll see original costumes worn by stars like Lindsay Lowen and Brecht Meyer from Herbie Billy Loaded, 
Michelle Trachtenberg and Ice Princess, Jody Foster, Marley Lawson, and the White Plant. We have Thompson worn by Stephen Belay and Joshua Hooter, the greatest game ever played, and from Sky High, worn by Kelly Preston and Kurt Russell. We have the world's largest working wardrobe here. We have a team of about 250 professionals. They could use up to one and a half million yards of fabric every year. And we've also used this shop to build top success for some shows and attractions for our more theme parks on the case. Well, next we're going to have a little bit deeper into the back lot. Now, back lots are where studios build elaborate outdoor sets that are available for film and television production. When teams travel to real cities and towns to film on location, they have many things to deal with that they often have little control over. Things like the traffic and the noise, crowds up together, of course. So to get around these things, they often prefer to shoot on studio back lots like ours. Coming up here on the left-hand side, by the way, one of the co-stars of Herbie Fully Loaded. There's Demolition Derby Herbie over there, one of the few models used in the film. And it's really not at all unusual to find large props like this on a back lot. In fact, we have a name for the area. It's called a boneyard. And most large studios have a boneyard or two with the cars, the planes, the spaceships, and other large items are taken and kept after they're used. And they're held on to there in case you might be able to use them again. A few more items will also be coming along here. The boneyard on your left, including a prop steamroller from Who Frame Roger Rabbit. A couple of Cadillacs. They're going to use in the gun and Betty Lou's handbag. You have it from Tin Men. The black and white police cars from Dick Tracy, starring Warren Beatty and Madonna. The blue barracuda used in Gone Fishing. That were shot almost entirely here in Florida, mostly around the Everglades area. Two prop airplanes next for the Rocketeer. And that's followed by a blue helicopter cockpit section used in Blue Thunder by Roy Scheider and Daniel Stern. The section we have here was suspended from a crane in front of a chroma key screen, and it was used to shoot the actors close up as they appeared to be flying with thunder. On the end, two motorcycles. Indiana Jones of the Last Crusade. And after that, it's going to be years with us here in our own Indiana Jones epic sense. We uh, have a pr uh, production team on our back hall today using some props for one of our boneyards. Right now we're approaching a large standing set on the right hand side that's been used in a number of commercials and TV specials. We've had a team here the last few days doing some special effects testing inside this set and that has prevented us from going through it on occasion, which is what we would prefer to do here. It looks like we're stepping up to make the turn, so apparently they're on a break or a big takes right now. So we're going to swing around the corner, we'll head up a little hill, and then we're going to cross a really bumpy bridge. So again, be sure to remain seated. Please keep a firm grip on any loose items you might have with you, like your cameras, your cell phones, sunglasses, small children, that sort of thing. The set where was modeled after an actual canyon in Southern California. It took about six months to build it. And that's a long time to build a set, but if you consider how long it takes on the major to build a canyon, six months is not that bad. And it does appear that we are the only ones around down here, so I think we could have to stop so you can take some pictures of bouncing around and I'll tell you a little bit more about the set. Just above our shuttle, we have a big platform area. It's a little hard to see from here, but that's where production teams can set up their cameras to shoot down into the set. You notice they have a tanker truck up here. This used to be one of our bone yards, and it was kind of tough to get it in here. There's no road over there. The bigger beam runs all the way through here, right beside the shuttle. Yeah. So the truck had to be hoisted over the canyon walls and then lowered into place with a crane. You probably also notice that the rocks are pretty wet. There's water dripping down and running down the ravines. They have to work me on some water effects here. This is, oh, wow. Well, like this one. Uh, this is a rain effect that I just did this morning. I guess there's still in the booth upstairs. Thank you, guys. A little demonstration for you, I guess. This, of course, is one of the advantages of working on the back lot. You need to create weather. Overhead are high-powered rain spouts that are outside. Uh, well, wait a minute here. Is he going to take two guys? We have a torn on here. You're supposed to kind of break. Uh, I guess this is an earthquake scene. Now we're in it. Hold on, everybody. Hold on.
Yeah, I'll take a look behind the heat panel there, and I'll show you how these catastrophes were created. Move over that way. Yes, sir. Move over there. Well, it's quite a different view from back here. You can see the canyon is really a big steel structure. It's covered with wire mesh. The mesh covered with a layer of colored concrete and then hand carved inside to look like natural rock formations. Small yellow pipes run throughout the set, supplying gas for the fires and explosions. All the large pipes carry the water for the flash flood. The flood started when we opened the gates on three large holding tanks at the top, and that sent about 17,000 gallons of water toward our shovel. A little more action, we shot some of the water toward you using air cannons. The cannons we have here are so powerful, if you were to pull one in your city from a basketball inside, you could launch that ball over the top of the Empire State Building. The earthquake was created with hydraulic shaker tables under the bridge inside. If we had those turned up all the way, we could throw a small car over the railing right into the ravine. The Gatsby Canyon was created with the help of a Hollywood special effects team. What seemed to be an out-of-control disaster was really a very safe, computerized sequence of events, and the whole thing could be reset, including that water all being recycled in about three and a half minutes. And that's plenty of time to get ready for the next shuttle. As we exit, take a look to the right, you'll see an airplane parked over here. This is a real airplane. It's a Gulfstream one, and was known for many years at airports all over the country as 234 Mickey Mouse. This was Walt Disney's airplane. One of its early missions was to shuttle Walt and his Imagineers between California and New York when they were working on the final planning stages of the New York World's Fair back in the early 1960s. That's where attractions like It's a Small World and Great Moments Mr. Lincoln, which we now know as the Hall of Presidents, the Magic Kingdom, actually got their start. In fact, that's where all the animatronics were introduced. He also used it to fly secret scouting missions around Central Florida when they were looking for the perfect spot to build Walt Disney World. And, uh, well, here we are. We've kind of been building it ever since. Over on the right-hand side here, we are circling around uh, one of our newest additions here in Walt Disney World. This is the site for our extreme stunt show called Lights, Motors, Action. I do recommend you try to catch one of the three performances that are scheduled for today. Those are all listed for you in your Showtime Guide, of course. This is actually based on one of the most popular attractions we have at the Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris, and it takes you behind the scenes to show you how we create vehicle action stunts in the movies. In fact, I think you'll feel like you're right there on the set with the film crew as they shoot a series of highly orchestrated stunts. They use specially designed vehicles and they have carefully timed pyrotechnics involved as well. The footage they shoot is edited and mixed with visual effects and sound effects to create a really dramatic action sequence. All this way for you on a huge television screen in the middle of it as well, so you don't miss a thing. And we brought together some of the best stunt directors in the world to work on this project. And we use vehicles that are capable of some really amazing maneuvers. Cars, motorcycles, and watercraft are all about. And if you've ever wondered how they create vehicle action stunts in the movies, this certainly is the show to see. So uh, be sure to check that out at any of those three performances today. Just around the next bend on the left-hand side, we'll pass another boneyard area, and I'll point out a few more prompts to you here. One of the first times we're passing is from the Haunted Mansion. I think you can tell which one that is. Yeah, just behind it, a miniature cattle truck with a hole in the side used to transport Mighty Joe Young. Very large aim, done through what's called cross-cutting scenes. The Acting Waste Disposal Truck from 101 Dalmatians, starring Glenn Close. We have a big space spot from Flight of the Navigator, and that starred a very young Sarah Jessica Parker, by the way. That was shot here in Florida. You Star Wars fans might recognize the Sand Skip and the Snow Speeder next, using the original Star Wars trilogy. A couple of big yellow objects, a submersible, and a helicopter from the Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. That starred Bill Murray. And the big red spacecraft on the end is from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was an escape craft used in the movie. And on the end, a couple of trips from a more crimps here from the Haunted Mansion. We have uh, left behind the canyons of Southern California. We're still circling around the Mediterranean Village. It is a really large set, as you can see. This is kind of the business side over here, the steel framework that keeps it standing. It is, of course,